Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. This is day two of 2023 and I feel like I must apologize because I was all giddy about the weather yesterday, clear skies, lots of sun, uh, only to pretty much have jinxed myself because it, they're calling for rain and I'm shooting this video on borrowed time because I don't know when the rain will start and uh, things will get pretty festive, uh, crazy around here. So first things first, uh, you guys can probably tell I'm hunched over. I actually have you guys parked on top of a trash can and then I'm leaning on that trash can. Um, I did some uh, muscle pulling yesterday when I moved the Smith machine and I woke up so stiff and so sore um, that it made it virtually impossible for me to stand up straight. So I'm kind of hunched over and just leaning over because that tends to relieve the pressure on my lower back, which is where um, I already have some uh, damage as it is, but now I've just compounded that by moving a 350 pound machine. Uh, so yeah, leave it to my mental genius to uh, make the right decisions uh, when the sun's shining, right? <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, I had some time last night. I took a, a very long steam bath to try to relax the muscles and, and whatnot. I ate something, and then when I sat down to edit the video, I managed to catch a few things that, that I didn't catch earlier on in my in the, the, the YouTube channel um, portion of YouTube where um, all the comments are. There were comments in there that... I hadn't seen before that were left months ago, like five, six, seven months ago. And typically I get emails when somebody leaves me a comment and then I can, you know, read through the comments on, on a, in a friendly view without having to log in and do all that stuff that Google requires you to do. I can at least see the comment and then get a basic idea of either, hey, this could be a video or, hey, this is a great question. Let me answer it right now. And then I kind of make the time for it. But I feel like there were some lapses in technology, if you will. And I never got those emails. So to those who left me comments that were left unanswered, I truly apologize for that. That is not my style. And I caught up with a few of them yesterday. So hopefully that'll make up for it. And there was one uh, question that was left in the comments and I thought I would answer that because I feel like my general opinion of this uh, this question changed to over the last few months so the question was you know what are my thoughts on the MSRP reduction um, and how does that affect you know the future of the Bolt EV well I think plain and simple um, I, I think you can get into this uh, a, a bunch of different ways, but plain and simple, um, it's a matter of remaining competitive. You know, the Bolt TV has had its uh, limelight taken away, essentially. And I, I mean that in a way, you know, not necessarily a bad way, but just in, in realistic ways. You know, when you have you know, massive inflation, and then you have a pandemic, and then you have a recall of gross proportions that hits you all within, you know, a year or two's worth of time, you know, your limelight tends to just burn out. There's no real simple way to get around all of the the side effects that, that come of that kind of thing. You know, the, the reality is, you know, COVID shut down a lot of places that were producing key components for the vehicles, whether it's electronics or um, otherwise necessary parts to make the cars run. Then you had the whole lithium ion thing to it with uh, LG Chem, you know, also having to shutter its lines and uh, fix the problems with the recall with the, um, the broken anodes and the folded separators and, and all that stuff that had to be addressed on the line. And then, of course, GM had to issue a stop sale of Bolt EVs just as a whole because they couldn't sell known bad batteries or batteries that are known to be under a state of recall. Whether they're bad or not is for somebody else to decide. But as far as, you know, realistic, you know, realistic numbers go, they just couldn't sell the cars. 
So the Bolt EV kind of just faded a little bit. And, and, you know, its colors were no longer bright and beautiful as they are. So, you know, I think GM's... Uh, I think GM sacrificing $6,000 off the MSRP price, first of all, it wasn't much of a sacrifice because if you look at the overall vehicles that are coming off the line now, they're $6,000 cheaper than they were, you know, before they announced the reduction. But none of the quality components inside the car were uh, sacrificed in the process. There was nothing done to limit what was being manufactured with the cars. So to be able to say that GM reduced the MSRP by $6,000 and then took away a whole lot of features from the car, that would have been probably a, a, a bigger problem for them than just sacrificing their bottom line a little bit and, and maybe not thickening out their wallet as much as they had hoped from the word go. But Suffice it to say that there is also the fact that, you know, there are new EV tax credits coming into play um, and also options that are being added to the vehicle. You know, I mean, Super Cruise um, is one of those options, right? It's a subscription option that GM is giving you for the first, what, three years, I believe it is, um, as well as, you know, some of the OnStar stuff that GM gives you for the first few years. You can always thicken GM's bottom line by adding all those options in later or whatnot, but you still have to purchase a vehicle that can carry those options. Like, you're not going to buy an ILT model with, and then expect Super Cruise to be able to be added later on. So, be that as it is... Uh, you know, and I feel to also point out, you know, some people have criticized me in the past for having bought at the top of the line Bolt EV in 2020 that I did. So for those who don't know, um, and I don't know how you couldn't know because I pretty much talk about this all the time, I was the proud owner of a 2020 Chevrolet Bolt EV Premier, uh, top of the line, all the specs, um, were included in that model and I paid $44,000 uh, for that car so it was a business decision and actually there was a psychological decision to it too I remember in the past I bought an Acura and then there was a Lexus and then there was a Volkswagen and then there was a few other cars that I've owned over the years that were not fully specced vehicles they were they were cars that were you know I wouldn't say base model but I wouldn't say they were they were fully stocked. What I will say is that they always left me the room to think, man, I wish I had this, or I wish I had that, you know, a feature or a function or something, you know, sunroof option or better sound package or, or whatever. There was always something that I, that I was missing. And suffice it to say, I didn't want that anymore. I figured you know, if I bought a car that I was going to be making payments on for, I think it was a 72-month term, so what, six years? If I was going to be paying on a car for six years, I would be, it would be fully stocked, as uh, Q would say in James Bond. And it worked. For two years, I never had that thought. I never thought like I was missing out on a feature that the car potentially could have had you know it had the 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 um, audio package it had the uh, you know I mean everything that the premiere came with at that point and I feel like it was um, just uh, it was almost medicinal I guess if you will because it, it eliminated you know that bummed like oh man so I figured, okay, buy it and live with it. And guess what? I did. And I never regretted it once. I didn't buy an LT and then say, oh, man, I wish I had the Premier. You know, you, ha you go back and forth through, through your mind thinking, man, I should have gotten uh, the, this or I should have gotten that. Or y you eliminate all that. And it's, it's actually a big deal. And for me, it was a big deal, too. 
In fact, now I'm driving my wife's RAV4 when I need to go somewhere. Um, and I always feel like, God, this thing doesn't have CarPlay. God, this thing doesn't have this. Or, man, Toyota thought that, why would Toyota think that I wanted to defrost without recirculation? Because you can't use recirculating when you're defrosting. Uh, why is that like a locked out feature, you know? And, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There's just certain things that just form regrets in your mind. And there's no sunroof in, in the RAV4. And uh, it doesn't help that I have to put, you know, a bunch of gas in it every few days because that's the way of the ICE engine. But suffice it to say, I never had that with the, with the Premier. So when I get the 20, 2023 EUV Premier, it's probably going to be the same thing because I got everything that the car had to offer at the time. And I won't be able to say, man, I wish this car had this, you know, unless they come out with like a whole different platform where they put the, the future bolts on the Ultium platform or whatever. And then I'll say, God, I wish I had faster charging or God, I wish I had a <laughs> larger battery or whatever. But that won't be realistic at that point. And it typically isn't an issue. But speaking of charging, that was also one of the things. How do I feel about the slow charging of, uh, you know, the 55 kilowatt max uh, charging throughput of the Bolt EV and EUV cars? Plain and simple, I live a life now that's not speedy or fast. I have no issue stopping for 45 minutes to, I don't know, an hour and 15 minutes to go from 10 to 80 percent, whatever or maybe a little bit more if, if depending on, you know, what kind of charger I stop at. Look, I moved to the middle of South Carolina, as you can see behind me, so I wouldn't rush, so I could live my life. And I say that because it seems to me, and this is just my opinion, it seems to me that people are so crazy in the world today, especially in major metropolises or metropolises or whatever the plural is of metropolis, that they have to pull into a gas station, get gas, and three minutes later be gone. Super fast. Get in, get some junk food, get out. You know what? That burned my health down. I was in LA for 18 years. 18 years of my life, I lived that kind of a lifestyle until I got the, until I got the 2020 uh, premiere where I am now stopping at a charger and now realizing, oh God, I have to get out of my car for at least 45 minutes. What am I going to do with myself? Let me tell you something. I didn't have a problem finding stuff to do. First of all, I work on the road. So I typically have my mobile office with me. And if I'm parked in a parking spot with the air conditioning on while the car's charging, I totally get my laptops out, get out the 5G modem and start rocking. No problem. If I'm on a if I'm on a family road trip, and I have my wife and son, or just son or whatever in the car, and I need to stop and charge, there's no problem. We get out, we walk around, we uh, we'll find some place to eat, we'll sit down for an hour, or whatever. The car's doing its thing. We don't need to watch it. It's not like being at a gas station where you have to hold the thing in, and and count the minutes as oh my God, I'm going to sit in traffic for two hours. All of that stuff went away when we moved here. That was a big selling point of this part of the country was the fact that life has naturally slowed down here. You know, there's no traffic here. I, I can't tell you the last time we sat in traffic, even during the worst rainstorms uh, on the freeways, during the longest drive we did so far was up to Charlotte uh, to see a family member up there for dinner. And it was pouring rain. And we were going. We were going between 60 and 75 miles per hour, and everything was great. I, I don't get why you wouldn't want to live this life. Now that I live it, I can't face the idea that I would ever want to go back to anything else. And this is kind of solidified by the Bull TV. For me, being able to get out and, um, you know, walk around or take the dog for a walk you know if you park your ev right here say this is a spot right here why wouldn't you want to enjoy this you know you could park here walk around have a picnic um, get your kid to run around to burn off some energy you know 
maybe do some stretches, maybe do some yoga or something. I'm not into yoga, by the way, but um, uh, not to say that yoga is not aw totally awesome and, and, and uh, very rewarding, but uh, that's just not my thing. But why wouldn't you want that? Why would you want an EV that can charge from zero to 80% in 15 minutes? And then you're just perpetuating that lifestyle. You don't have the time to breathe. You don't have the time to relax. You don't have the time to, to do any of that. You're always <laughs> sitting in traffic, you know, always being the defensive one, always driving like, like a, the word that I will not say on this channel. It's one of those things that you just have to flip your mind over. You have to understand that, hey, listen, you know, you live a longer life when your heart rate's slower, when you're less stressed. And everything is cumulative, right? So if you're sitting in your vehicle in traffic and you're already hostile because you're late and then you realize, oh, God, I have to charge my car. Oh, man, it's going to take 45 minutes. Oh, my God, I'm going to miss my meeting. Or, oh, my God, I'm going to be late to a client. What's the point? What is the point? And it is true that the EV, being an EV owner, requires planning, you know, you have to plan your stops. You can't just be like, oh, I'll just get off at the next Chevron and fill up. No, you're going to plan your stops for various reasons. You're going to go to a place, maybe a level three charging facility that's near a mall or a near shopping chain or a grocery store or something or a Walmart, uh, you know, one of those Electrify America plants that are in, in a Walmart parking lot. Why not? Get out of the car, walk around, do some good, get your circulation going, get your brain out of that <sighs> that hostile fog. But again, that's my opinion. I feel like I only, I, I, first of all, I feel like I got gypped really badly. I got robbed of an experience because we only got to do really one road trip um, together as a family. And we went up to Mammoth Lakes, uh, California. And that's, you know, uh, it was probably about a seven or eight hour drive with two level three charging stops. But you know what? We spent $9 on electricity for that <laughs> whole trip. And for me, it was phenomenal. For me, it was like, wow, I could have easily put $80 of gas into this car. And, <laughs> you know, if, if it had been a rental or whatever. And put that much money basically down down into the gas tank. But with the EV, man, we got out. We went into a grocery store. We bought lunch. Uh, there was a spot to let our dog out. She enjoyed running around, smelling all the... Uh, I call it checking her email because, you know, dogs, when, they, when they're on a the walk, they have to check every piece of email <laughs> on the road, on the, on the grass or whatever. And... We had the time to do that because we weren't rushed. It wasn't like we got into a, a rest stop to literally turn the engine off for six minutes so you can go inside, use the facilities, come out, maybe buy some soda and a vending machine and maybe a candy bar or an ice cream or something, whatever is there, and then boom, you're back on the road doing 80 in no time. Well, where's the human element in that? Okay, so you use the facilities. That's a human element. But at the same time, Where's the, the stretching? Where's the walking? Where's the getting your circulation and your mind into a better spot? Where's the breath of fresh air? You know, the... <sighs> well, I'm not saying in California there are too many places where you can get breaths of fresh air unless they have uh, horrendous uh, atmospheric rivers that clean the atmosphere. But the point remains. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, slower charging is... Uh, to me, in my mind, and trust me, my mind's not uh, the know-all, say-all, or the great oracle, but my mind tells me that that is actually better for health. And that's, that's, that's all I'm going to say with that. You can, um, you can take it for what it is, but I feel like faster charging EVs take away something that the human body needs. Um, and uh, that, that's, that's pretty much it. I have no problem, you know erasing the old idea that, hey, you know, I can go, um, you know, 300 miles in five hours or five and a half hours because I have to stop at gas stations. I can erase that thought and say, okay, 
it's going to take me 10 hours or 11 hours to do that same drive because now I'm stopping for an hour every, you know, 200, 175 miles or whatever to charge up. Or, you know, th it just depends on terrain. If you're going up hills and, and stuff like that, then you're going to stop a lot more frequently. But you can also do it mathematically and say charge up from maybe 10 to 15 percent to 50 or 60 percent because that's going to take what a half hour if you're in a hurry and then you just stop more often and then you can kind of entertain the human element but kind of not so for me I'm personally like okay well I want to stop less often but make those stops as productive as possible whether it's uh, um, time them with meals or uh, time them with a chore if I have to if I know I have to go into a Walmart to buy Groceries or something like that and I have a cooler in a bag I can get some ice I can put the groceries in there and then truck along my route to get to where I need to go Etc, etc, etc. So I, I don't I don't know take it for what it is, but uh, you know going back to the the question of the reduced price I, I think there's a lot of competition now also in the market with regards to electric vehicles that you know GM had to kind of bring back that limelight that I said kind of faded over the last few years because of all the the negativity that came uh, kind of flowing out of the out of the back end of that car but to be honest you know I, I get that the battery fires were a major issue but I'm telling you, I'm living with a regret right now that I gave up my car. You know, if nobody wanted to transport my car because they were afraid it was going to burn up or, or it was going to burn their truck down or whatever, then I should have been, I should have been the guy that said, you know what, I'll just drive it across the country and be done with it. You know, and and maybe we could have transported this car. Uh, my wife and son could have, I don't know, flown or they could have gone with me. It doesn't matter. With the Bolt EV not able to tow much, at least you shouldn't tow much. Please don't tow with your Bolt EV, unless it's like a bike rack or something on the back of your car. Um, I wasn't going to tow 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 pounds with my Bolt EV, which I did with this car. Um, but I could have just folded the seats down and loaded the Bolt EV up and then just dealt with the charging stops every, you know, I don't know, two hours or so which maybe would have made for an enjoyable trip, you know. I meant, it's funny because we drove across the country um, in June of 2022. We drove across the country. We went to, we got on the freeway and we were like, yeah, you know what, let's stop at the Grand Canyon. Well, it turns out we got to the Grand Canyon in the middle of the night. And I also realized that we passed the Grand Canyon about 15 miles back, like when we were, you know, on the freeway. So, it, we were too far away to turn back, and it was there was very little interest to really go back anyway. But the point is, is that it's it was one of those things where maybe with an EV I could have stopped at one of the the, the charging facilities at the Grand Canyon and had an hour of time to walk around and take pictures and do videos. And I feel like the I feel like the Bolt EV would have given me an opportunity to record more videos and I would have had a ton of footage because think about it, every stop could have been potential for 10, 15, 20 minutes of footage that could have been cut down to three to five, but then you're doing that like six times a day. So I could have had a 20 minute video every day for five days. And um, I kind of miss that, you know? I miss the experience, I miss having the opportunity to drive an EV across the country because I don't know if or when I'll ever drive across the country. You know, my kid who's going to turn 10 in July this year in 2023, he keeps telling me that, you know, he misses California and how he wants to live in California and all that stuff. I know he's got friends in California. I'm not going to ever say that he doesn't. Uh, he misses his friends, you know, his school friends and whatnot. And he talks to them regularly through his uh, through FaceTime and whatever. But the point is, is that 
it's funny because if he turns 18 and decides to move back to Hollywood where he was originally from, I don't know if he'll go back to Hollywood, but if he goes back to L.A. or whatever, um, it'll be interesting because um, what am I going to do in eight years? Am I going to have the Bull TV? Um, <laughs> am I going to have something else? Uh, I don't know. But suffice it to say, I'm getting a 2023 um, with an MSRP swap, and I still have to 2026 to pay it off, right? Because it's a it's a six year term. I don't know, something that kind of just comes up in my mind every once in a while. But now that I'm on the East Coast, listen, there's a ton of stuff over here. I have family in Florida. I have family in Pennsylvania. I have family 45 minutes away, but uh, I'm pretty certain that there's going to be a lot of road trips. Once this Bull TV EUV comes into my life and um, this 2020, uh, 2023 uh, model Bull EUV comes into this driveway somehow, then we're going to have some fun with it. Just like I said yesterday, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for road trips up and down the east coast there's a ton of stuff around here um you know i feel like i need to, to show my kid um a lot of the stuff that you don't see on the west coast you know washington dc for one um take him to to the white house maybe and and give him give him the opportunity to walk the white house just like i did when i was a kid um somebody's street racing somewhere um or at least trying to it sounded like they failed miserably but there's a lot of stuff you know maybe go up to new york and you know i wanted to take my wife and son up to new york this year but things were crazy like i mentioned yesterday i didn't even get a chance to put up holiday lights this year that's how crazy things were so now that we're settled in and you know we're we're getting to a you know, a reasonable spot in our life where things are calming down and things have calmed down over the last few weeks. So definitely, you know, if I were to put up my holiday lights today, I'd be okay. <laughs> but, you know, I think there's a lot of things that uh, are in our future that we don't know. The future is not written, right? So it's up to us to make or break that future. And I think that once you get to a point where where life is at peace, then you have really nothing much to worry about. I think all the stuff that's coming out with the Bull TV, all the recall stuff, all the, uh, the, the issues, the problems or whatever, those will all at some point fade into the past and you will not even remember that they happened. Right, Dutchie? Dutchie came out to say hello. So... I'm going to leave this video off here. Um, I feel like I've talked for a long time and uh, you guys probably have better things to do than to listen to me yap anyway. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go down below in the comments, leave me your thoughts. And I will be sure to check my comments more frequently just to see that uh, you guys are getting answers when you deserve them. So in the meantime, I hope you guys have a blessed new year. It's day two. So um, until next time, thank you guys for always watching. Bye-bye.